I'm Jake Warmore and this is the Bear Rule Podcast. With this special edition of the podcast, there are some adult themes and strong language. So to be warned as you head further into your listen. It's now with Jake and Max, one's pod you one stack, who's who you decide is now a guest on the side. Sometimes we scrum and sometimes we move, but together we're going to bear all. Bear all. We back, baby. Myself, Jake Wilmore, and Max Lahif. Uh, Max, they've given us another season. Some people say a bit of a shock. I think, what hell couldn't they? Um, but we've gone big this time. We've gone very big. I know. We are. They've we unleashed the shackles, guess wise. All right, so we're back here and we've gone big. And we're delighted to welcome former Royal Marine and Special Forces star of SAS Who Dares Wins, Jason Fox. Welcome, welcome. How are you? Hello. All right. You forgot our esteemed colleague and teammate and best friend, Harry Thacker. Well, he's a bit overshadowed today. <laughs> normally, normally Harry Thacker is the rock star in the room when it comes to us three, but yeah, um, he's been slightly overshadowed. So, yes, we do also have Harry Thacker. Um, he's, if, <laughs> if you're on screen, he's... <laughs> yeah! He, yes! My guy! He's the, he's the nugget in the corner of the, the table over there, sitting in a hole. Um, so, <laughs> but, um, Jason... Welcome. Well, this isn't obviously the first time we've met. You've been with us at the training ground all day today. Yeah. Um, just uh, give us your thoughts. How have you found it? Firstly, the training facilities are next level. Yeah, I was overall when I turned up. Because I'd, I'd actually been to, when I'd been to the old training ground and I thought that's where you still were. So when they said, oh, turn up, I said, oh, yeah, I know where it is. And they said, no, 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 there's a different one. Got the address, turned up, and I was like... Can we swear on this? No. <laughs> yeah, you do what you want. All right. I'll you, you especially could do what <laughs> no, you want. No, no. <laughs> and it, I was just like, ah, wow, this is unbelievable. This is unbelievable. I keep walking away from that. Yeah, it is. Right, but it was, yeah, it's impressive. I was able to sit in on the coaches' meeting and then I sat in on you guys debriefing and rebriefing on moves and whatnot. Not that I'll talk about it, obviously. No, but. well, yeah, we're well, uh, debriefing me or your. your probably your terminology that you're used to back in the day we we review review sorry yeah. reviewing yeah but yeah no i loved it it was great to be in there and like you feel the sort of the vibe the team the lads and all that it's good yeah well it was good to have you so the facilities right i've been to the gym where at pool at your base yeah the new, is it the new the new facility there now it's, it's new isn't i it? should imagine it's new now yeah i left yeah, a while a ago good setup yeah they do have a good setup yeah is it? It, they've always had a setup that's always been focused on fitness and but it's all sometimes it's been a little bit old and dated but i should imagine now it's like next level I mean, it was full like open like box and then in the side they had a sort of mma department yeah 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 you have you've dabbled get amongst it a bit of bit of grappling bit of so yeah i used i used to be i used to be into a bit of uh, muay thai whatever however you want to pronounce it a bit of thai boxing so i did a bit of that but then i was part of a squadron so the group of lads that i was with uh we were all into some form of scrapping and yeah. so we'd go away and we'd always set up our own little dojo and just have a bit of a roll where people that could roll would teach us a bit about rolling people that would fight fight would do that and we used to sort of get amongst it a little bit too much. Then blokes would get black eyes, cauliflower ears, a bit like you lads. And then the hierarchy would be like, hang on a minute, you're here to do it. You're not here to fucking fight with each other. So we used to have to rein it in a little bit. But yeah, we, yeah, you do do it. Oh, you get taught a bit as well. Dreamy. Dreamy. Well, on that, just wanted to have a little double. What is your... Uh, have you had a double in the old uh, rugby union yourself? We did discuss a little bit earlier because uh, I've seen pictures of you throwing a ball about down at Sandy Park a few weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a little bit, but enough. I'm not going to start talking about that in front of you three, am I? <laughs> That's just going to be embarrassing. Is there anything, pull out any tricks? Not really, no. I wasn't very skillful. Just uh, we used to, So there used to be uh, a game that was between the two special forces units. It was rug. It was, it was classed as rugby, but there was a lot of scrapping going on, yeah. a lot of rolling around. It was quite, yeah, it was good fun. Yeah. It was a bit of a blowout. Played a little bit as a kid, but um, yeah, joined the military. 
fell by the wayside. Because <laughs> um, uh, we've done a lot of discussing today, obviously. <laughs> yeah, look, we know it's happening. I'm feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Where's this going? You the glisten on hot. your face is unbelievable. I've got, I've got boob sweat. It's yeah. happening. We're just right the way. We'll roll with it. Sorry, do. continue. All right. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I was distracted by your apologize, Foxy Fish, but No, it's all right. It's just, it's just one of those things. You come on yeah, our yeah. podcast. Yeah, you've got to sit next to me sweating, sweating for an hour. Watching. It's normally me, don't worry. Um... So yeah, well, where was I? Yeah, so you've been in today, and you've uh, you gave you had a little chat with, with us as a group and stuff, and uh, gave us a little insight into what it takes to be a Royal Marine, special, special forces officer, soldier, soldier, soldier. soldier. Operator. operative, operative is op- operators, the operator, word I want to go for. Yeah, yeah. and um, it's actually quite clear to see. Me and Thax were talking about it as well a little bit earlier. The the comparisons, obviously. They're completely separate, but very similar, like yeah. between uh, rugby and being in the in the forces. You know, it's, I'm not trying to say it's life and death. No, no, right? I think, yeah, but I know what you're saying, and I agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, big thing you brought you brought on was a bit like resilience and stuff like that. Um, and I just wanted to open that as a forum, really. You know, facts is over there quiet. I need to bring him in. Uh, what were your thoughts on today? <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, we spoke about a lot. There's a lot of correlation in there between us as a rugby team and, you know, Army, Marines, Special Forces. I think just being a group of lads, working, um, getting fit, ripping each other. Um, but just hearing you talk about, obviously, there's it's very different levels of, um, you know, we get it wrong. We might lose a game, you get it wrong, and you might lose it you know, a friend or whatever, like, um, we just found it very interesting, sort of the, the ethos behind how you got to where you are, um, and sort of the, what sort of was the common trait that would get you to those sort of places and, um, how that correlates to rugby and you mentioned discipline and how important that was, um, in and around what you've been through. No question, I just... No, that's good. And that actually leads me to a point I wanted to say, because there's a big thing I said, obviously, listened to you speak a few times, heard you a few times, how you um, you signed up when you were 16. Yeah. Which I actually think is mental. Because, like... When did you start playing rugby? 16. Yeah. Yeah, I know, but I wasn't shipped off somewhere. And and you said how you... Your first few days, you get taught how to wash yourself... Like you get spoonfed, but like just to get packed off. And you said you you could be in with uh, a room sharing bunks with blokes that are like ten years older. Ten years older than you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, like, like is that is that how how do you manage that? Because I'm comparing you that now to some of the say eighteen year olds that we have in the change room that come through the academy. Half of them don't even know how to do up their boots. Yeah, but saying that though, so we turn up on you turn up on day one, and I was sixteen, and I was fortunate enough to have decent parents, as in they taught me shit. And they, I wouldn't have said they prepared me because I didn't know my ass from my elbow, but I was prepared to a certain degree. Looking back on it now, would it be easier to join at 16 than it would be like you're 26? Would yeah, you say? Easier 100%. To mold? I, don't, I don't, I sometimes now look at, there's a lot of the older guys that actually fall by the wayside because they've already lived life. They're not happy with, the, a lot of the training team, the d- directing staff, they're like younger than mm. some of the guys mm. that have joined up and they're you know they're telling yeah. them what to do they're screaming and shouting at them and it's a bit too much whereas I'm like I've come from home I've been getting bollocked for 16 years and it hasn't changed and I'm I'm happy with it you know I found it a bit difficult I didn't know how to wash clothes and iron them because I had my mum my mum did it for me but I could pick that up quickly and actually the younger guys learn quicker and adapt quicker and are probably yeah. they are they don't they, I don't think they're more resilient they're just they they just bounce, you know what I mean? Yeah, easier to institution. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 Easier to fit into the system. <laughs> easier to moral. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And how many years did you do in the Marines before? You went did t- well, just forces? under ten, nine, and then at twenty-five, I uh, put in for the special forces. So did it? Yeah, did. But th- those nine years, it wasn't. That was like early mid 90s onwards it was sort of it was pretty 
good travelled the world, mm. saw a lot of it, played sport, pissed up, generally had a good time. And got paid to do it. Got paid to do it. And then, yeah. <laughs> then I put in for selection around the same time, a few lunatics flew some planes into a couple of buildings. So then it all went a bit. It all went well, did a bit that, real. Did that galvanise your decision to go? Uh, it didn't. It hadn't galvanised it because the decision was already made. Oh, but, but it basically it did very very quickly change what being in the military looked like. It went from being the odd tour of duty in sometimes a, a, a sort of frisky place mm. to basically going away actively. Like yeah. we're going after. This. Well, there yeah. seemed to be there was a you know there was this whole at war terror. on terror and yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. that sort of became the drive and so you know that's what we were involved in for that, that period of time is that is that easy to to get behind like or is that just like this you know as I say you said you spent nine years sort of doing it bits and pieces does that do you get scared of that or like obviously it's your job or do you sort of think this is why I'm here and get a bit sort of like we're finally yeah into something yeah I spent nine years like a lot of that nine years, I was training to be a soldier, going on training scenarios, exercises, whatever you want to call them, almost not playing at it, but, you know, not doing it for real. And I, and a lot of the lads, there was loads of us like, oh, fucking, when are we going to get to do this properly? Mm. And then, yeah, be careful what you wish for, because yeah. it came in abundance. But the other, re the other point of me wanting to join the Special Forces is because even when it's quiet normally, there's still, there's a lot going on. Yeah. They get, a, yeah. They're busy because they're busy doing stuff. Be like the equivalent of us doing nine years pre-season. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I imagine <laughs> just wanting to play a game. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Eight weeks in, feels <laughs> sixteen weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so obviously you did a lot, of, a lot of traveling and that. Like, what is? Let's see. What's the worst environment you've been in? Maybe not like actual job or operation, but like worst environment like, as in what this planet can throw at you yeah yeah or yeah like just like Sierra Leone just like, not yeah just like not you know the most difficult or something you experienced because of like yeah you got like cold hot wet uh, damp I got a lot got a, so I got a load of stories about different versions of uncomfortableness but the hardest place to do to be a soldier is fucking Wales <laughs> Really? Yes. And the, and the reason for this is like everyone says, oh, you know, who, who, who produces the best soldiers? And it's the Brits. Fact. And the reason for that is you just got to look at our training areas. They're cold, they're wet, they're miserable, they're muddy. It's not like, you know, you go to Norway where it's, it's really cold, but Man, it's clean solid. yeah, and it's crisp and it's dry mm. cold. You go to the desert. Yes, it's hot, but it's dry. You know, it's you know you can operate as long as you know how to look after yourself. The jungles are slightly different, kettle of fish, but when it comes to being cold, wet, and miserable, Wales or the UK, the UK in general, you know, we're in the middle of probably one of the worst summers we've had in a long time. That's why they push out the best soldiers because we as Brits go out and that's our backyard. We train in it, and if you can put up with that, then when you go somewhere else, you're pretty well prepared to deal with it. I think. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't think you'd say Wales. That. I thought you were going to say the desert. Well, just, I would yeah, but when, when you think about it, you know when you're in Wales and it's sideways rain, yeah, 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 and yeah, you've yeah. got to like that's you, you piss wet through, and that's you for ten days, yeah. and you dig it like when you're in places like Wales. To, before you go to sleep, you have to dig something called a shell scrape. So it's about that deep into the earth. It fills up with water. Our full. That's where you're sleeping. It's fuck, mate. Honestly, it's grim. It's ha grim. Hell of an advert for the UK, huh? <laughs> yeah. 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 Fun. <laughs> Stay in Wales. <laughs> I don't mean just Wales, by the way. For the Welsh out there, Northern England, Dartmoor, it's all, you know, it's all pretty It's, it's all rubbish. To, uh, yeah. <laughs> Not rubbish, just challenging. What about your favourite? Oh, I love the jungle. You do love the jungle? Yeah. yeah. So, so in selection? Because it, it is challenging. You do, you do the middle phase. Is, there? is in the jungle. It's you spend a month living in the jungle. Where is that? Where, where, where? Can you be Brunei? Brunei. So on the, on the big island of Borneo, there's a little bit. Ah, the Brunei Borneo jungle. Oh, yeah. Wow. It's um. And why do you love it? I don't know. It's where you. 
do you just you just, wear proper you feel like you <laughs> like, it's Dutch like being in the NAM. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I used to watch NAM films. I was like, I can't okay, just yeah. loved it. All right, cool. And then back in the day, you used to went on selection on that phase. You used to fly into the see they pick you up. You you and you get to a there's a small camp called uh, Sitang Camp. It's on the coast. It's by mm. a beach. It looks like the palm trees and all this. Yeah. You do. You stay there for a week, acclimatising. That basically means getting absolutely beasted on the beach. You get you get up at R four every morning. They beast you for a couple of hours. Come back, get changed, and you go on the. There's some like ranges nearby. But then what happens is, once you're going into the jungle, you pack your Bergens to live in the jungle for a month, and then you get onto the old Huey helicopter, like the ones they have in the old Vietnam films, and Back you, old, like those, yeah. yeah, the old oh, ones, yeah. and yeah. they're flying over the the jungle for like you could you, literally as far as you can see it's like broccoli oh, wow. and then they just drop you off you get off the helicopter the other end in the jungle and the world closes around you like the the, the heat sound. and the humidity and the sound it's just like overwhelming and some there are some people that get off that helicopter and just cream in because it's just too it's overwhelming oh really they're just yeah. dust they're just dust as they step off yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. this is an alien planet but it's not just that they know that they're being tested and watched all the time yeah, so yeah. it's a double double whammy but it's, it's yeah I like it it's cool it's challenging but it's yeah and did what you, you, to, what you, you doing you? in the jungle what yeah. um, so you, you you sort of that's where they uh, you you show the training team that you're capable of patrolling prolonged periods of time out on operations you're living in the jungle so it's it's a very difficult environment to live in you, you're in a hammock every night if you're not if you're not in hammocks and you're on what they call hard routine you live on the floor no hammocks you eat cold food so there's quite yeah and there's a lot of bugs and stuff. Gas, insects but you there. do a lot of range work so live firing and you're really close to your your yeah. um, other patrol members and it's all about a lot of what you're gauged on in there is your attitude within a small team your ability to pick up tasks and skills quickly and but mainly your safety with a we- it's all about your weapon handling skills that's and it's all like well, I spoke about it earlier the basics it's that's all they're interested in can you handle a weapon safely and show that you can do it safely whilst operating in a tight space and what have you that's what that's about and the weapon the weapon the weapon for most operations stays the same in terms of uh, um, on the junk on the phase when you're on the course it's the same yeah, it weapon matter, yeah, yeah. yeah but then when you when you get into a squadron there's fucking guns everywhere oh, you, you use <laughs> what you like pit. there's lots of different things for different f- things fascinating <laughs> <laughs> I sometimes think as much as I think ah oh, like you see the SAS and all like, yeah I would do it. I think I'd be written off by sleeping in a hammock. Really? <laughs> I think that would be the thing I want. Mate, hammocks are good, mate. No, I used to sleep yeah. in the best thing for your back. I really? yeah. used to sleep in a hammock yeah. and it sorted me out. Jen? It's the way ahead. Well, yeah, I just think I'd be. The prawn, bro. It puts you in I'd, it's I'd literally get out of it and I'd be like that for the rest of the day. Nah, nah, trust me. It's the extension that kills us as props. Really? The flexion is wonderful. Well, maybe that. Maybe I need a weekend. Oh, I think you need a hammock. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, a hammock or a Do not are sleep in the floor in a jungle of Borneo. The best sleep, so you get are in the jungle on that thing. or actually what so it's only ju- it's just gone out of service in the military but I mentioned this earlier as well the Hercules transport plane yeah, oh, those are that's cool. normally where you get you get fly everywhere and if you're ever flying anywhere and it's a long distance you always want it to be a Hercules because what you can do you always lads always take their hammocks on board they just tie then as soon it. as it takes off you just tie it up between the rafters because there's no fucking seat and you just how good it's you better. get you a good feel the attitude it's better than business night sleep yeah. and, and you gently you're rock just to sleep swaying like a baby in that <laughs> yeah, thing yeah. with the altitude oh well, that's sounds... a lot of people do listen to the sounds of the rainforest to relax oh it they? must be not until it's like the sound of like Something you'd know. Yeah, howl a monkey. Howl a monkey. Yeah. <laughs> like, or like the predator. <laughs> or, the, or the pigs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, this, that's Wild too pigs. Much. Wild pigs. He's squealing. <laughs> I just think constant heat. I'm sweating in here. It's not even. No, that's the only. That's, that's the, the humidity. Thing. Yeah. And the humidity. Just you can't. The sweat. This sweat would never have evaporated. You, you, You'd you, just be a you pool. would be in an absolute yeah. shit state. <laughs> Eighty kilograms. There'd just be. There'd, yeah, be, yeah, be, there'd, be, yeah, there'd be like Asda, wouldn't there? There'd be a hat. <laughs> <laughs> on the floor. Yeah. What happened to Warmore? He dissolved. He dissolved. <laughs> he dissolved. <laughs> he dissolved in the jungle. He's like a Barocca. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that actually know, sounds though. terrible. Yeah, the jungle's definitely the worst. Like mosquitoes the size of rats, scorpions. Oh man, Snakes. get that in your shoes. Oh, you put your shoe on. Bang. 
That's Cro- you done for Crocs already. wouldn't be the best. I I've been done by a scorpion twice. Have you? Yeah, I got done. I got done on my ankle, which fucked me up a little bit. But the, there was one. Was I got? I've been stung on my ball bag. <laughs> how, how did that? Happen? I don't know. It's only small. <laughs> It obviously crawled up. Anyway, I've gone in. I've what, like... What was it, the scorpion? I've, no, no, no. no <laughs> both, both. It had to be small. <laughs> uh, got, I laid down in a fire position. So you're supposed to be quiet all the time. There's no fucking... You know, they're literally watching you for noise. The only thing that makes a noise in the jungle is supposed to be your weapon. And uh, I've gone down into a fire position. And then it's like... I've laid there. And then I've just gone, fuck! And it's like a searing heat. Oh. And I've stood up and literally in the middle of trying to be quiet, I've just dropped everything fucking yeah, tackle out. out. There. And I'm looking and this thing's fucking falling down. It's only tiny. Didn't it wasn't it wasn't like deadly, deadly. it was just fucking it was like a hot pin going into yeah. the sack. Don't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nasty. But other lads have got I mean there's worse than that. People what? getting fucking attacked by millipedes, they're worse than scorpions. Oh mate, they're yeah, scary as as well. Yeah, there's all sorts of. What about those? Um, you know, in like Afghanistan, they got those. Um, you are about spi- the, the camel spiders. spiders. Yeah. Oh my! I've never they really. Actually... I've seen them, but I've never seen anything do what they apparently do. Because apparently, these camel spiders, they inject you, inject whatever the prey is with a, an antiseptic. Um, and an and anesthetic, sorry. Oh right. So, so it it, numb. it numbs the area, and then they just chow down. Start eating. And there's stories of blokes waking up in sleeping bags with bits missing. Oh bro, that's where straight. Where the spiders just that's had straight a, Ridley Scott movie. That's Alien. Yeah, I think that's where they got the idea from. Them yeah. things. Though, yeah, oh. yeah, the face huggers, a hundred percent. On our spiders, man. Have you seen them? Oh, and I bro, don't they are to. nightmarish. Like they're like flesh-coloured demon. G- Google it after. <laughs> you mate, they look. Can we odd. get a photo of one of them up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the pull, that, pull that up. Pull yeah, that camel yeah. spider up. I want nothing to do with it. No, that. it was terrible, bro. They don't. They look like the things of eldritch horrors. You don't want to see that. <laughs> but um, that's oh. so. With the, which is the hardest bit of the selection? Did you find? Did you pass on the first time? By the way, uh, I did, no, not really. I got in. So that that one that I got stung with oh, on the ankle took you out because it was it was on. Where the boot is, where it and you binds, put it on, and it just—I couldn't keep it clean, and it was just getting infected, infected, and then I went down with a fucking bit of a bloodborne disease, oh. or infection, sorry, disease, well, like septicemia, so. and got f- got flown out. So then I basically had to wait for the next course, and then I, oh. fortunately, because I was doing all right, so it depends on how you're doing. You, can, you might you have to might. go back to the beginning, but I was able to go back into the jungle Straight phase, the so I didn't jungle. have to do the phase before, and then went on and. Which is, yeah, which did you find the most challenging out of the? Th- the jungle's the hardest. The jungle is the hardest. Yeah, okay. because you're just being watched all the time, listened to. It's how, like, how are they doing that? Are they, is uh, it, is just a so they live in with you. There's a when you're in the there's a jungle base camp next to the jungle base camp where you are. There's the DS, so they're nearby, and they already they've been out there beforehand, and they know all the routes, and they can cut around. And you'll you you'll be back in your like you'll be broken up into patrol areas. And uh, of an evening, you'll come back from a patrol and you'll be writing a report. Someone will be sketching where you'd been. All the, There's lots to do and you're sat around like a... You build your own little sort of bench to hang around and you can drink. You know, someone's making a hot drink. You all share that and you're doing all this. But you're talking. You're all just chatting away, whispering to each other about anything. You could be talking about one of the blokes in another patrol who's pissing you off. He's on the clipboard just going yeah, all down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then sometimes you'll be like, fucking that... Fucking what's his name on the DS has been a right twat and they're like that. Anyway, you'll be doing all this. Next thing you know, someone will pop out from a bush, right, lads? How's it going? And you're like that. And then he'll just walk oh, yeah. off and you're like, Here's the bush. What have I been <laughs> <laughs> You're like, hang on a minute, what have I said? Oh, and no. like you're all like that going over, right, hang on a minute, we said Sketching. this. How long's he been there? Oh. Yeah. And then yeah. Sketch. So, just like me in the change Correlates room. a lot. <laughs> coaches are in just doing the getting their boots off and I'm just flying into all of it. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. and then they just walk past, I'm like <laughs> said too much. I've said far too much. Again. Oh, yeah. Can we get this camel spider up quickly, just so I can have a look at this? <laughs> Nate, <laughs> he's fixate. Oh, how wow. big is that? Look how at, big is mate, that? They get in... big. Mate, they can get really big, apparently. Yeah, yeah. and they're quick. Rapid. They're so rapid. that's biting you. You don't feel it. Apparently so you don't not. even feel the. Bite. No, I reckon apparently you feel not. the staplers going, and then after that, it's nothing. You just and then he's munching you. I mean, he's, he's got one eye bigger than the other. Yeah, yeah. look at that. that one's had a good that's name. That's horrific. Yeah. Look at he's just completely evolved for the desert environment. Hardly <laughs> yeah. any hair. Blends in beautifully. 
Oh, this is just terrifying. I mean, this is turn, turning into like the old <laughs> Deadly Sixty. <this. laughs> there's a because there's a there's a, a snake called the Fur de Lance. Have you heard of this thing? No. It's one of the only snakes in the world that's territorial. It's in Central America, and apparently it's fucking poisonous. It will kill you. Yeah. Not very big, but if you're in its territory, it, it will come for you. It will come, and it's that quick. Apparently, that if a horse gallops past it, okay. it can get a bite on each leg without getting hurt. Ferdinand, what's it called? Ferdinand. I'm getting into that later. Yeah. Have own. a look. Have a look yeah. it up. Yeah, I will. Yeah. Okay. Can we get? A <laughs> <laughs> so the and then the, the the first one you basically are, the first ones on the Brecon beacons. Yeah, you're just running around. And you're just running. Yeah, basically just you you it's your your proving that you can navigate to a certain degree. It's easy to navigate in Wales because fucking hills are massive, but when you get into the jungle then you've got to show that you can really navigate because it's in the jungle it's really difficult and it's really it's very hard difficult. to yeah, you've yeah, got a micro nav yeah. disorientated yeah I reckon facts you're killing both of those because you love the woods and you can run for days DT possibly as well but I'm worried about him with a map Age or a compass <laughs> and just with people and people he can't work with a yeah. team no he can yeah. he's just a bit abrasive <laughs> Willie, you're with both. No, you're turning to mush in the jungle. I reckon you get through the hills. You're fit. Hills I'm not making it past the hills. Both cast blown out. I don't think you're getting past filling out the application. <laughs> before, in all fairness. Yeah. Who else? Who else would be Clark? You have to pass the medical first, mate. Yeah. Yeah. You reckon, I reckon you'd, like, you'd be no, suited to becoming a Royal Marines mountain leader. So they do yeah. a really hard course as well, where they're doing not dissimilar things, but they go to Norway. To mm. do their thing, because they're oh, operating yes. in the Arctic. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a bit of oh, a big Parker. Yeah. You just be yeah. up there, yeah. yeah. Like I the Siberian like wastelands. Can, can you ski? No. I can imagine. <laughs> I, can imagine I haven't tried. On the moguls, just <laughs> bobbing and weaving. Yeah. I, I reckon he's more of sort of yeah, put yeah. the planks on point downhill yeah, and just fucking it. egg yeah. it. French fries, pizza hut. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Who else would be any good? Who else would be very good? Yeah. You want to, like, I think it's a lot of slogging, isn't it? I reckon obviously Steve has already served. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's already, you can already see those kind of, he's got it. Yeah, the, we, yeah. He's You've got also the, got, he's got the grit. Few, we've, yeah. yeah, we've had a few of them lads in. Yeah. They're tough. They're tough. Yeah, yeah they different. are. They're different. They are boys. a different, yeah. 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 <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of soft, soft Caucasian white people, um, <laughs> your, your show, obviously, you get um, people on to test out their, their metal, yeah. so to speak. What's the... <laughs> How soft does it? Uh, do, are you like appalled? The first time you saw it, were you like, "Oh my lord"? Yeah, there's there been. Um, to be fair, the very first one we did that was a complete experiment. No one knew what it was. The lads that came on it, fair play to them. That it was, they were taking a huge chance because it it had never been a TV show before. So they put the put the word out. Had thirty guys turn up, of varying levels of fitness and fucking capability in life. Some of them, but they they came there for the right reasons they were there to challenge themselves yeah. and we absolutely it wasn't very technical back then it was just us with cool. them yeah. there was no health and safety there was no we didn't do any of these tasks where we're abseiling off things which slows everything down we just goosed them for seven days and they got absolutely malleted and they were they were they were half decent they were actually all right and the, some of the guys that got through to near the end were, were really good but then since then they've sort of because it's become more of a sort of it's not entertainment i don't like to call it entertainment because it is a real show where people get pushed but there is varying degrees of or levels of fuck wittery that turn up you why oh, really? people are there and yeah, yeah yeah but it's yeah it's funny we j um i'm not going to say too much because i'll get fucking into <laughs> trouble but we've just done one and the day one on day one is i can't wait for it to come out it is class the the absolute fucking stupidity of some of the people on it is is next level. It was awesome. Normally we get wound up, but it was that it was that it far was gone. Shocking. We were yeah. pissing ourselves. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's a celeb one. Yeah. That's a celeb one. Yeah. Is it a real representation of? No, not no. really. We. So what it is is selection puts you under certain pressures. It tests whether you're mentally and physically robust whether you've got the ability to be uncomfortable, all those sort of things. Have you got a stubborn, determined mindset? And so what we've done is like created something 
that is short and condensed but puts people under the same sort of pressure and then we throw in a few iconic yeah. tasks or whatever it may be into it to give it a, a level of authenticity it's, it's very difficult to simulate a six month course in seven mm. however long. I always find have you watched it much? I've watched the bits yeah I was I think we discussed this earlier as well how, pe how easy people cave but it's always it's the ones that give you like fair enough something's tough or there's huge fear there's when you've got Foxy in your ear going you're not good enough why don't you just hand in your armband and they go like this alright yeah and I'm like you are pathetic <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, I'm like you, you, you get, that's you get stronger. Yeah, I'd be like, I'd be like, keep whispering yeah, in my yeah. ear. Keep See, whispering. Yeah, you'd love it. Wow. <laughs> this Stop hulking up. Like. <laughs> this is the thing on 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 real selection. You'd be going through the course, and like, I turned up. I was 25. I was skinny. As, I was different. I was skinny, young. I enjoyed running, and that was it. And um, you turn up, and there's some mate. There's like older blokes, and you, you know, and you're like, oh, you know, have I. Have I bitten off more than I can chew here? Anyway, you go through the course and you see people falling by the wayside, giving up. Once the first one gives up, that's it. There's a domino Most effect of people go. going. And but you get stronger from it. And we, I don't know whether I don't know if any of you've seen a film called The Highlander. Do you remember this film? It's old, 1986. Wait, is this, is this Sean Connery? It, yeah. yeah, where yeah, they yeah. chop that, people's the, heads man, off. Re, you know Henry Cavill's doing the remake of that. Are they? Are yeah, they? Yeah, they're doing no the way. Yeah, yeah, he wants. Oh, to, like, he's doing it. Yeah, that's it awesome. It's a great yeah. film. So basically, when he chops someone's head off, there's this moment where the bloke that's chopped the other bloke's head off gets all the power from that yeah, bloke, and it's called the quickening. It's like that that sensation you're feeling is the quickening. And the we used to, on selection, we're always like that. That sensation you're feeling is people fucking giving up, wrapping their tits in. Do you do you get like do you get, you get power off it? When you <laughs> when you get there, do you start like eyeing them up so you go, you're going first, or like I'm gonna make sure I'm here longer than you? Anything like that? No, I think you're too like busy in your own. Too busy in your own. On the real suffering. one, you're too busy in your own head. You're yeah. like, I need to. Yeah, I don't care about anyone else. Slay my own demons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Probably very preoccupied with mine. Stay back. <laughs> but, yeah, like, mate, David Goggins always says it. He's like, I'm taking your soul. That's what he was talking about, Navy SEALs. Yeah, see, I, he was like telling the instructors, I'm going to take your soul. You know, when he was talking about Hell Week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hell Week's the same concept see, as. Yeah, they, so they're all roughly geared around the same, same sort, sort of thing of but everyone's same got their own values. bit yeah, yeah, and yeah hell week's obviously just an yeah. absolute Try slog in just different ways turn yeah. you into sugar biscuits and drop See, your i feel like i need that i need to be so if me and you turned up i'd look at you and go, i'm taking you yeah yeah, yeah. Then i will last longer than you then when you're going i'm looking over at harry going you're next yeah yeah that's the only way that's what i do when we do fitness tests i literally look around going all right who is nowhere near me forget them like I hit PB. Just I was like, I'm staying with facts that's as long idea, as I can. But I, if that's a completely. I wasn't going to take him, but I knew like standing next to you, I'm beating you. <laughs> yeah, 100. percent Yeah, and then I'm like, ah, looking around, alright. So who do I need to stay in front of? Who do I not want to beat me? And who do I want to be closer to? Yeah, fair. You know I mean? And that's like, and I I got PB just running, trying to run. Well, I was nowhere near him come the end, but I tried to stay <laughs> with him as long him, as possible. Chase that man down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's it. That's what I've got in my brain. That would. No, I'd be so preoccupied with my own madness. Yeah, I think, yeah me yeah. the same. That's that's what it is. It'd be people telling me I can't do something that would. Yeah, if, it, if you've got the up. CEOs like saying you can't do this. Yeah. Oh. How about you just give Don't up? tell me there's I can't nice, do something. There's a nice warm cup of tea if yeah. you just drop out now. Yeah, it's a bit yeah. like that. You're just telling. <laughs> you're just telling me things I, I already know. <laughs> I'll put you back in the jeep. It'll be nice and warm. Aircon in there, and you're just out in the brick and beacons, just seeing your ancestors out there, <laughs> just absolutely <laughs> glazed over. Man, it sounds. Hor How far do you have to go? On selection, on yeah. these hills, yeah. like they're different things. It but it's, it's there's a few criteria tests at the beginning, but then the test week at the end of it is you've got a. It's yeah, it's hard. It's <laughs> you're carrying like 80, 85 pounds on your Bergen. What's that like? Fifty four, forty, 40, 40, 40 kegs, 40 is kegs it? roughly. 40, Give or take. Yeah, forty kegs. Yeah. Thirty seven point three. Um and you've got to make the times and you're doing about you, you're doing about 25 30k a day except the last one the endurance which is apparently as the crow flies it's about 56 57k but after all the fucking navigation you're doing about 64k you've got 20 hours to do it so do you know what would be the worst injury for that blisters yeah it yeah. is yeah, but it's what seeds people off oh there's nothing much you can do about it, is there? 
ones that go gone that got like, footwear is yeah, key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, do, you, do you choose your footwear or do they give you footwear? No, you, on you selection you can choose your footwear as oh, long as it's God. military. What military. do you guys wear? Mostly Solomons? Uh, nah, that was back before. In the, that was before. We, we used, in fact, I'd say they probably use the same boots. We, I used a pair of boots called Altbergs. What would you wear now if you had to do it? <laughs> probably those. Those Just normal, pretty basic leather boots but they could just you know they're gonna yeah because oh, you need something cruiser of leather shoes yeah okay. the solomons will just get ripped to shreds oh, after really? a month you want yeah. the same you want the i had two pairs of the same boot and i just kept rotating them because oh, they yeah. get piss wet through and yeah 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 no to put that into context though i used to walk <laughs> i used to walk around ashton gate right which was only like Ashton Court. Ashton, Ashton Court. Court, sorry. Mm. Ashton Gate. Yeah, not, not, not that far. <laughs> anyway, we used to walk around Ashton 400 Court. 400 metre round trip. <laughs> with, a, with a 30 kilo weight vest with the dogs. And I was only going like, I don't know, 15,000 steps. Not that far. Is this the time That's that you were right, always yeah. had calf injuries? This was, yeah. No, no, no. This was after the calf injuries. So I was like, I'm going to strengthen up my feet. Yeah. So I was wearing like barefoot shoes and doing that. The 30 kilo weight vest. And I was dust. Like, you know, when the dog just goes off and mm. you have to chase the dog down, you're wearing this weight vest. And you're like, how the devil yeah, the people do, do the, 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 like, commandos and stuff walk around with their webbing and stuff like that much? I've know. done a couple of 5Ks and I think I'm going to die every yeah. time. Yeah, exactly. Like, we're not built for continuous. I mean, I just, yeah. We're like a stop. How heavy were you when you were... Um, uh, I was a lot lighter than I am now. It's probably sort of kicking around this... Late seventies, eighties. Yeah, that's where we. Need. That's the sweet spot. Isn't it? Mm. Skinny, but that's quite how you move. Quite, yeah. In, quite. Yeah, I was all right with going. Yeah, yeah, but you. Yeah, but you said that was your. That was your X factor. Yeah, but then, you then you get to do the you get into the job and it's more about bursts of like. You then starting to do the sort of combat stuff where you're jumping over walls and shit like that. Oh my. Those assault courses. Have you done one, Harry? No. You mate, you'd be so. We did good. one marine camp down when I was at Leicester, but the is it Limston? Yeah. Yeah, that was busy. Yeah, so we went to. Uh, Oakhampton. No, well, we had the bases. Well, Limston, not you didn't go not to Limston. Limston. We went to. Four two. All oh, right, four down in Plymouth. Yeah. Down near Bickley. And we just uh, we did a week there. Honestly, it was. Boys hated it. I weirdly loved, loved it. it. Yeah, Every, what, I mean, and we went. Yeah, about, yeah, why did they? Guy. Why did they hate it? He was probably running on. Well, all it was like, like no sleep, wasn't it? We were. Yeah, yeah. We were up in the middle of the night a few times. Um, Guys with bad backs. Oh, yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you said, boys aren't aren't built for endurance, are they? But we Some were up doing five k yeah. runs, swimming through lakes, <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> yeah, I loved every second of it. And then we had one night with the mountain leaders, building your own dens. Leaders. Yeah, that'll be you when it building your own taking, dens and sort of killing some de heading some chickens um, <laughs> and then dress them up and uh, and a goat and we cooked that and ate there. And that was Man, one that evening sounds, as well. Oh, that does sound fun. And honestly, I loved every second of it. Yeah, weirdly, it is, it is good. Yeah, yeah, I can see why people don't love it though, especially if you're like a big heavy Ford that's got to then run 5k. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, it's just not. It's not really conducive. It's not for everyone, is it? It's horses for courses, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I remember as well. We um, they went easy on us on the last night, and because um, that boys were just sitting there, they were toast, all done. And then there was like two or three boys that, um, so they given us the night off. Decided they were going to go out, 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 and went out into um, into town, and ended up bumping into like the the leaders in the pub. And they were steaming as well. But when they came back, it was like 4 a.m. and we'd been told we got the night off. They like came into the uh, barracks screaming, like, everybody up, everybody up. So everyone was like panicking because like, you have a dry set of kit, don't you? Yeah, 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 so everyone's yeah, yeah. a wet kit on. And then they come out and they just see these two, like, two boys steaming, just laughing. <laughs> it was Sam Harrison. He was just creasing. That boys guy's off. a lunatic. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, but no, loved, loved every second of it. Yeah. That's that, it's those bits that you forget about the wet and dry kit yeah. you always like you'll have two sets of kit because your dry kit is what you sleep in so it helps your body re, you know recuperate after being in wet kit but when you're getting up in the morning or whenever it is that you've got to get up you've got to get back into your wet kit mm. and it's yeah that's, it's, like that. yeah. it's oh. a miserable miserable it's part clammy. of it yeah. yeah I am clammy <laughs> it's just infections 
like yeah. rashes. It's and like all over trench foot. Yeah. What do you, <laughs> do, you do? You guys, you must because you're on your feet all the time. You're in boots. Mm. You must have an issue with blisters as well. Oh, oh it's, it's honestly the most underrated injury in rugby. I'd say it's the yeah. blister because it's like, no, you're fine. Just put a second skin on. But it they fucking hurts. Uh, yeah. So and you, every step, it's like torture, isn't it? I think you you're still like, getting them though. Yeah, yeah. But I think you just mature. So like, I always strap like my left big toe because like, you know it. Because I know at yeah. one point <laughs> it'll go. Because <laughs> I just know the amount of times I put boot on and I say steps. Uh, I mean, I've changed direction at some point and it's just. Yeah. And gone. you're like, and mm. now I've got the next like week of. Like, Preseason's the worst. Because like, boys Ground have had five stars, weeks yeah. of feet softening up and then they're straight back into hard pitch, new boots. So, like, first couple of weeks, boys, yeah, blisters. See, I'm intrigued because I was told this technique of dealing with blisters mm. and I used it and it was. Awesome. So I on selection I had, I think it was on my right foot. I had a fucking, I had a big old blister on my heel. It was just fucking rubbing, and it come up, and I was like, I don't know what to do with this because you don't want to burst it because then it's. Mm. Anyway, someone told me you get a get a needle and thread. You you put the needle through the blister so it goes in and out. Thread it so that there's the threads coming in and out of the blister. Wow. Take the needle off and leave it. And then what it does is it gradually drains, so the fluid gradually drips down the thing and it slowly decompresses. The and time. then by the time it's finished, the skin underneath it's dried out. Has, has, has dried out and had an opportunity to sort of already get that next layer on. That's fascinating. And I've only done it once and it worked, but that was in a different, you know, I'm not on a pitch sprinting, I'm just... <laughs> Chugging I don't out. know if Steady I like the away. idea of that. Yeah. No, but I didn't really have a problem. As long as I wear the Zunos, I'm good. Nice. Never get blisters. Shout out. Nice. Shout out. <laughs> there it is. My guys. My guys. Yeah. Well, what I am fascinated about, though, because <clears throat> this is what I sort of, you were talking about, and I relate it to some of the, maybe the uh, the younger members of our squad and that, and how you went from, because you were talking about, obviously, you signed up when you were 16, hmm. and then, obviously, you were running stuff as team leaders, running a running a team within a squadron. Is that correct? Oh, yeah, you are a team leader, yeah. Yeah, team leader. How easy did you find that transition? Do you think that's something that was already in you? Or do you think you mm. learn it on the way? Or No, I don't think How I was quickly do you think you could you step up into that? <clears throat> I wasn't, it wasn't, I wasn't naturally, I'm not a naturally extrovert sort of follow me, we go in, we're charging it. That's not me. But you, so I basically, I learned how to be a soldier. I enjoyed it. And then what comes with that is responsibility. But the Marines especially are very good at developing their leaders. So you, like, as a, as a lower rank, you will do what is called candidates training, where the, the guys above you, the leaders of whatever rank they are, junior or senior, will assist you in what they know. Then what happens is you go, it, once you're deemed ready, you'll go on what they call, it's called something different now, but it was called the junior command course. That's to become a corporal. In the, in the Marines. So you'll, you do the junior command course, that's 16 weeks of learning how to lead at a, a junior level. And you'll learn how to present, stand up and talk and give lectures and write a little pro training program and all this sort of stuff. And it's, it's really good. It used to moan about it. Everyone's like, oh, fucking hell, I don't want to go on that. It's like, because the pressure's on, you've got to pass, really. But it does do you very well. And then once you've done that, then I went on to become a, a senior sergeant a sergeant within the squadron so I then went and did a senior command course which is another 16 weeks but of a higher level of so they prepare you very well and from that you get a lot of, from that you get a lot of confidence and that that's what assisted me that's what really helped me and it's the stuff that I learned on those courses I've definitely put into practice and used out like after I've left the military I'm, I'm grateful of those courses even though that they were an absolute pain in the arse. They're 16 weeks away from your home unit. You, you know, you're somewhere else. You're actually down at Limston. That place, as a, as a, as a trained soldier, going to Limston is horrendous. You don't want to go there because it's like, it's all the bullshit. It's all very regimented. People, like, you got to look smart. And you're left, right, I'm not really left. a smart person. Yeah, there, yeah. So, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't great at the time, but it, was, it is what it is and it's, it's always worth doing. Yeah. And you think that probably transferred over to like the stuff you're learning, all of that transferred over to what you're doing now? Because you do a lot of like 
what is consultancy expedition stuff and that's sort of how you fell into well not fell into that's how you got into onto the SAS yeah so do you want to know how I got into it to the the TV the show, show yeah, yeah. So I, le I left the military, I had an absolute nightmare, I had a couple of jobs that didn't really work out, struggled for a bit, and I was, I was basically mate, staying on mate's sofas and stuff like that, and a mate of mine who lives right around the corner, Aldo, he had already just, he'd sort of left the military before me, a few years before, and he'd eventually sort of found, him, found his way into TV, working for production companies, looking after them when they went to like hostile environments like the Arctic or the jungle, and he'd sort of be the medic and do all that sort of stuff. Anyway, he knew I was in a bit of bother. Me and him went and did a job for a couple of days where we stunt rigged something for a TV show down in Southampton. Came away from that and he phones me up a few weeks later and he's like, mate, I've got a job on out in Madagascar. I've already got another job that I'm on. Can you cover for me? Can you do this? And I was like, yeah, fine, mate, yeah, 100%. So I flew out to Madagascar, and then from Madagascar I bounced onto this small tropical island just off the coast called Ile San Marie. And basically there was a, a production com a production crew there working for the History Channel, and they were filming underwater archaeologists, and they were diving in this lagoon that used to be like the safe haven for pirates back in the back in the day in the 1600s it was a golden age of the pirates you know that's where they all lived and hung out because it offered them protection and they could scoot out from that location and smash the ships of the east india company that were ferrying their goods between india and the uk and making money so that's what they were and they were diving on suspected um pirate ships in this lagoon so i was there as their medic in case someone got hurt but i was also the underwater cameraman's dive buddy so he would be down underwater filming these guys sifting through silt and shit. And I'd all, be, all I'd be doing is checking his air, giving him a thumbs up. And we were living on this tropical <laughs> island. We were on a five-star resort, getting pissed every night, oh. doing this. And these old guys were picking up teacups and shit every now and again that had never been seen since the pirate had dropped it or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So it was pretty cool. Anyway, on the third week, third or f yeah, third week, me and the cameraman, this guy called Sam, we sat on the surface. We've got our inf uh, buoyancy aids inflated. Sat on the surface, just fuck it, we're bored. We're bored of watching these old guys. They were cantankerous fuckers as well. They were like moaning about yeah, everything. Yeah. Anyway, this old guy pops his head up from below. This bloke called Barry. So he was like the lead diver, this American dude. Knew everything about pirates. His, his, you could sit with him in the barn, just did tell you everything about the old school pirates, like Captain Kidd, all this sort of stuff. He's popped his head up and he's like, ah, Lads, I've found, 100% I've found the Adventure Galley. And the Adventure Galley was apparently Captain Kidd's infamous ship that no one knew where it was. There was rumours it had been scuttled in that lagoon. So he's, he's then finned over to the side to go and recharge his cylinders so he can carry on diving. And me and Sam are like, should we go and have a look and see what he's fucking banging on about? So he's like, be using, go on down. It's only eight metres deep, so we've gone down. And you can see his dive site because they mark it all off with bits of string and there's like markers noting something and there's a bit of there's like a fucking excavated hole that goes into the air into the seabed and underneath what looked like well i presume it was an old ship's timber and sam's got the camera he can't talk he's like pointing so i've like swam into this hole it's pitch black can't see anything and i'm just like scrabbling around like at anything can't see anything and then as i'm doing that in the mud i can feel something in the ceiling of this sort of like man-made cave and it's hard and cold and i'm like I fucking wrestle with it, falls out, falls into the bottom of the hole, I'm trying to pick it up, can't pick it up. So I've like called Sam over, he's put the camera down, swam over, come in, we've lifted this thing up, put it on the seabed. It's still, there's murk everywhere, so he's gone back to get the camera, and I'm like, fuck, <laughs> trying to see what it is, and there's this, as it's cleared, there's this lump of metal, and it's like that, and it's slightly shiny, and it's got shit carved into it, it's got like a T and an S, and then there's 1695, and oh, wow. we're like, what? what's this? And it looked, you know, you rub it and it goes shiny and we're like, fuck. And then we're suddenly panicked. We're like, we've just, we've just <laughs> decimated this boat's dive site. So we've like launched that back in the hole and we're, we're ascending to the surface <laughs> as this old blasted Barry Clifford's going down. So we're like, he's passing us like that. Yeah, you're right. We're like, yeah, we're all right. Get up, get out, get our kit off. And then we wait. He comes up about 20 minutes later, gets de-rigged, comes over to us with a face like thunder and he's like, hey, you two fucking come with me now. We're like, we've like behind him, tail between our legs, a couple of naughty school kids. 
turns around and he's like, you found that, didn't you? And we're like, yeah, <laughs> what is it? And he's like, ah, he goes, I'm telling you now, that is part of Captain Kidd's lost treasure, 100%, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, we're like, yeah, whatever. There was a load of stills that were on the camera that Sam had done. They got, we got back to the hotel. They sent them off to a couple of experts, God knows where, around the world somewhere. And then, you know, a few hours later, they're like, ah, yeah, Matt, that's meant that is Bolivian silver that Captain Kidd apparently plundered in such and such a place in the Atlantic. And then it just blew up and it became this big thing. And it was apparently the biggest bar of silver ever found, 55 kilograms. Was but and you found back it. End, yeah, we found it. But then <laughs> you told someone about it. So what happened? Yeah, no, <laughs> mate, 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 it all kicked yeah, off. Yeah. It all like Believe every every like... man and his dog descended on that island. The, the fucking president of Madagascar, he'd never even heard of the island. He turns up. Yeah, what's the island playing. called again? Ile Saint Marie. Yeah, that's yeah, St. Yeah. St. Mary's I Island read, in I French. Read, I read a big ass term on pirates as well. It was yeah, class. it was it was well, it's yeah. well, no, but it's well known. Yeah, no, it there's was a, a few was, pirate captains who chilled out there. Yeah, yeah. Le Bouze, the buzzard, yeah. you know, the French buzzard, geezer, Yeah, there was an on one of the headlands. There's a pirate um, cemetery, and there's like old um, headstones so cool, with skull and crossbones carved into it. And that they used to hang out there and just fucking live, live a debauched life. Yeah, but we. Essentially, that job was coming to an end. We had to look like, well, it looked like we were going to get lynched by the locals because they thought we were, like, plundering. plundering. Yeah, yeah. We weren't. But then that died down. Then the job finished. And as I'm flying back from that part of the world back to the UK, I'm thinking, wow, this was awesome. I've had a great time. But what the fuck's next? And it was a guy that was on that production had flown back early, started another job with another company, which was the company that do the show and they'd come up with this idea and they'd had this meeting about the idea and they were like brilliant we'll do it but where the fuck are we going to find these ex-special forces guys and he was like i've just been in madagascar with this guy you should give him a call so i got a call and that's how it happened off how the back end of good pirate train. that's a magical story <laughs> it's good. how good yeah, is yeah, it? That's, I, I, that's awesome <laughs> did you get anything for finding it no, no, you're not. not uh, you, to, you can't uh, take uh, anything, mate. No, you can't. I mean, Strip. where is that? Yeah, I mean, that's, like cr- that's criminal. Well, like, back in Bolivia, it's probably. Prob- yes, yeah. probably a <laughs> no, paperweight no. on the president yeah, of Madagascar. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's probably he probably taps his, his cigar smoke onto it or something. <laughs> Too far. Too far. Too <laughs> what far. did he say? It's a good show. It's <laughs> a good show. Sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. But um, also, Captain Kidd. Is Cap- Captain Kidd was the geezer, right? Who was sent? Who who said he was going to go out as a privateer? Yeah, and he was like, "Nah, fuck it, I'm going after all these." He's West going after Street. everyone, and he went after the West India Company when he wasn't meant to. A very naughty boy, because the guy before him, Avery, yeah, went after the Turkish uh, Turkish treasure ships. No, the the Bab. Is it what the, are they? No, the not ba- Turkish. They were called no. like. Wasn't the it the Bot- Babars? Or yeah, the something like that. Barbary, Barbary, Barbary pirates, yeah. yeah. And then the West Indi- they had they complained when he took that big one yeah. to the West Indian Training Company, and they went back to the Crown and were like, how very dare yeah. you? You need to sort out that Avery fella. Because uh, there was a difference between pirates and privateers. Privateers yeah. were pirates, but operated for the Crown. So they just, yeah. as long as you hit ships from a, an opposing country, or, yeah. all good. But a pirate is someone that just doesn't give two shits about any of that, and they just hit anyone. Yeah. So he became a pirate. But he had that. The, the, so he's a, he was a Scotsman. Oh, William yeah. Kidd. <laughs> it's turned into. It was deadly. Deadly sixty. Lesson. It's now like history. Yeah. Yeah, but how good Horrible. is history? Yeah. I had no idea when I read that book. I was like, I thought pirates were like an overblown thing. They were, if anything, they were under, like underblown. Like sixteen hundred, late sixteen hundreds was nuts, mate. Mental. It was a free for all. Mate, it was also, a free for all. They set up their own banking system. They'd have an insurance policy. So if someone lost a leg in battle, they yeah. had a policy where they would get you paid out for it, for it and that. Yeah. So they looked after each other. Yeah, it was amazing. It was, it was like amazing. a code of conduct, and they loved the lash as well. But kid, kid was like a real. He was a bad boy. Think you'd be a good pirate. Do you know what? I've got. I'd probably be awful. I've got. A, do you want to hear a pirate's rhyme? I don't know why I've kept it on here. This was the last place I thought we were going, but I'm down. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to bring it out because these, these old guys knew about this because they uh, they basically got all the documentation off of uh, um, what they'd sort of found in documents, you know, ships, logs, and all this sort of thing. And old, um, I think it was the. Bart Roberts. There was a there was a uh, a pirate called Bart Roberts, and he they used to he had this thing where he, like a poem, I suppose, and it goes uh, rums out, as in rums run out, rogues applauding, as in they're getting Larry, yeah. 
much talk of separation, as in you me, looked sharp for a prize, found one, much rum aboard, all went well again. <laughs> Basically, unless they're lashed up, they're yeah. not happy. <laughs> but that was like one of their songs. He, he documented the fact that if they're running out of rum, he was in a fucking yeah. flat spin because he knew his lads were going to start kicking off. Mate. So he was always looking for another f- ship that, he, that would have a bit of cash on, but ultimately they just rum. wanted the... They just wanted rum. Yeah. A pirate's yeah, life for me. Yeah. I'm not on a mega tangent there. Mate, it's not the same though. nowadays, is it, pirating? Oh, mate, you can't... Can't really get away with much now, no. Mm. So we think you know, we do Somalia's all right. had it down to a T for a little bit. Yeah, they did yeah. all right. That doesn't seem like the sort of life I want to live, though. That mm. one, no, there. but that was it was a glamorous thing, wasn't it? Like yeah. you had that. Do you remember? Th- oh no, we. Oh, mate, I'll go on too long. Now. <laughs> like, <laughs> don't stop it. Seriously, <laughs> seriously, stop. I will, I will go into it. But anyway, yeah. Well, mate, that's a class story, though. Imagine. Yeah. Oh man, uh-huh. that'd be cool to just be diving in treasure wrecks, shipwrecks. So after that one. You got approached by this new program, yeah. SAS. Did you have any reservations about doing that? Or you told me you, yeah, you didn't actually sure. think you'd be on yeah. camera. You no, I thought be. I was being spoken to as a consultant. And then it, you know, it eventually turned out that it was to be on screen. And I was like, no, I'm not happy with this. And I told him why I was uncomfortable. You know, the fact that I'd been in the special forces, that the, the group itself would probably not favor, not look favorably on it. Then. I was like, well, I haven't got anything because I'd because I'd left because I'd left because of being medically discharged with mental health issues like PTSD, mm. which then I couldn't get a job in anything that that old job would allow me to. So security, any big contracts that involved me using weapons, nah, sorry mate, you you know yeah. you're a bit mad. Oh, All this really? stuff. So you got so get- I couldn't do that. I couldn't join the police because of at the time you know mental health issues would be seen. So it was like a brand, and I was like, I'm. It's like having a degree and never being able to use it. So I'd got all this experience and I couldn't really use it in anything that had some security behind it, as in a secure job yeah. with future promotion, career. And so it was all a bit bitty and, you know, jobs weren't, they weren't forthcoming. Then this came up and I was like, Fuck, I'm torn between the two things. You know, my, firstly, my, my sort of, you know my my commitment to that community but secondly i was like i'm running out of money here i've got no money mm. and i thought well then i saw a turn around to the production company i was like well you'll just blank our faces out wouldn't you and they're like nah <laughs> no one engages with that it's got to be full on and i'm like Fuck. so there was another period of me being like oh my god spoke to a few mates and then i was like look as long as i as long as i conduct myself in a way that i would be happy with and try and be as good an ambassador as i can for the organization i've yeah. come from then i'll i'm gonna do it because if i don't do it some other fucker will yeah, yeah. so you that's might as well get paid and yeah and yeah. I, I, I sort of had a you know i had phone calls from there's a department within the group called the disclosure cell and they got wind of it and they're like heard you thinking of doing this thing and i'm like fucking hell word travels quick and i'm like yeah and they're like well you know why, why are you doing it I'm like because I'm fucking skint I'm like yeah. I can't I'm struggling here with life and this is an opportunity and I'd be I'd be a fool to let it go but I was like you know I'm never gonna I'm not gonna do anything that puts anyone in jeopardy I'd never do that and so you know you still have to you know I have a there's a dialogue with them and you make sure that everything that you do is above board you know I've written books they get to read the books you know check wow. it over they you know anything that needs adjusting tweaking yeah. I adjust otherwise I'd go to court I'd be in court mm. we've just gone through that process recently so it's yeah or would you be called a traitor to the crown no I think just an absolute <laughs> bell end <laughs> but I get called that anyway so it doesn't yeah. matter <laughs> okay uh, no not not so much treachery I'm not selling secrets yeah, yeah. Okay. but it's yeah. more of a more of a slip up intelligence broker y- yeah. yeah exactly no, not quite um who was the who's sort of the the toughest contestant you've had on there? Um, so in the UK, there's as in celebrity wise, yeah. UK, the first celebrity one we did for the UK, there was three really tough people on it. There was only one winner, one person that completed it successfully. No winners. Um, that was Wayne Bridge, the former Chelsea footballer and England football player mm. actually very he's really tough he's, he's got an en- he's got an engine on him I didn't I wasn't too sure 
Uh, he was on there with Ben Foden. Ben Foden was fit, strong, an ox. But he just didn't make it. He, he chinned it off in the interrogation phase. Otherwise, he'd have, he'd have done good. He'd have finished. And then in, in amongst that group as well was um, Victoria Pendleton, mm-hmm. you know, the cyclist. Mm. Fucking... She's only small. She's good. Jesus, she's fucking... Yeah. So when you say chinned it off, what do you mean by that? With uh, he, he pulled the plug, so he's in the interrogation. They're going down the route of whatever. I think he didn't want to face his demons too much, and so he, he pulled the plug. What, was, Which, what specifically was the route? I don't know. I don't know where <laughs> Slow down, Max. Oh, I, yeah, like, I think they were going into personal history, and yeah. I don't know. Oh, I uh, see. I so what? That, that's... Oh, that sounds I'm not sure. They sort of dig into things. They've looked for a chink and they oh, go so they'll for go, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's probably got a closet like the Natural History Museum. Yeah. Big old skeleton. <laughs> Can you say it? He said it now. Yeah. <laughs> what? Uh, um, oh, I can get edited. The man. <laughs> it's not live. He turned to his face. Well, it doesn't know. matter. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he would agree. Yeah. We've got. We've I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, 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 if we're going to go on the same, you know, in, in Australia, we've done it. Yeah. And, you know, uh, in Australia, the ones that I've been part of, it's been two rugby players that have won it. And they've probably, if I'm being honest, they've been the hardest blokes that we've had on it. We had um, Nick Cummings, the Certainly. Honey Badger, and uh, Burgess. Yeah, he's I've had a great story about Burgess on that show. On the, uh, the, the bus. Yeah, he hijacked the bus when mm-hmm. he was doing 70 miles. Yeah. He didn't just no. hijack the bus. He got the driver in headlock when he was trying to drive the bus <laughs> at 70 miles an hour. So we, we'd kidnapped them. They were going into interrogation. They were on the bus. I've told this story before. Um, they've got hoods on. They're blindfolded. And there's a cameraman in there and a driver. And they're driving them to the next location. We, as the DS, have been jumped in another vehicle so we can get ahead of them and set up. So we're there about an hour beforehand. We're like that. Where the fuck are the? Where are they? I mean, we're like we're, we've been there like an hour and a half. We're supposed to be like half hour into what we're doing next, and uh, producer comes running in like that. Fucking hell, we've lost the recruits. We're like, what? What do you mean you fucking lost the recruits? They're human beings. They're in a. What's happened? And uh, they're like, that. they've they've hijacked the bus and they're driving to Sydney. They're on they're on the run now, and we're like, what? We fucking. <laughs> They then found out what's happened. What's happened is they've been in the bus all blindfolded and fucking Sam like lifted the hood up and had a look, seen that there's this little guy on the camera and the driver and he's like, fuck this. He's like, right, fucking everyone, put the fucking camera down. He's like, stop the bus, bro. He's like, I ain't fucking stopping the bus. He's like, <laughs> got him in the fucking rear naked and fucking... <laughs> Just pulled him like, out. Literally, the bus is like... Arr! Pulls over, dit, he's like, get out, fuck off. Yeah, Cameraman's like, so no, no, good. I need to record this. Okay. He's like, right, you can stay, fuck off. Gets in, and he's like, <laughs> they're, they're like I'm gonna, man, that's he's literally just going, I'm gonna, I'm gonna Mate. take this into my own hands now. So when he was at Bath, you're right. Um, he always had that sort of edge to him, and um, he was telling me about this story in preseason at South Sydney. And they had something similar, like it was like a sort of special force, like some of the boys got like get like abducted into a panel van taken off and um him and his brothers were like ended up like filling in the um the the uh, guys because they were like trying to like choke out people like fully black you out whilst you're like tied up but like his brothers have you seen his brothers they're yeah. like yeah. they're like happy and moody you know the sons of four just huge specimens and they were just all trying to beat the his two his younger brothers are twins they're bigger than him though aren't they oh man yeah. they are yeah huge Aryan, yeah yeah, they're vast humans. But yeah, mate, that sounded like the most clean-off preseason I've ever heard as well. <laughs> the South Sydney one that year. Whoa. And the way uh, Sam Sam talks about it, it sounds like it prepped him well for that. Like, <laughs> like work. Yeah, he, was, he yeah. was good on it. He was good. Such yeah. a class. Mate, he's yeah, mental bloke. Hell of a boy. All right, well, so on that note, I wanted to go around. You know, So we're looking at teams to go out with. Do you, do you ever like, not that you know everyone everywhere, but is there certain people you're like, they're the people I'd want to go with. You had to pick like, what would your team just be if you were to go out? How, ma- how many people? Eight? Go out where? What do you we'll just go out on an operation. Well, it depends what the operation is. All right, so you need five people. Yeah. Who would I pick? Yeah, well, we were just wanted, I wanted to open the form to us really, but like, what, what, do, you, what do you need? 
Because right, earlier, earlier on, you were discussing that some you normally you've all got slight roles, haven't you? Like, you've all got a special, you've all got a specialization. Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, sort of. obviously, we're not going to pick guys from our squad that are good at demolition or anything, because obviously we're not trained in that or dog handlers or anything. Right. But just some characteristics we might want. Yeah, and we're going to see if we can fill them. Okay. Because I know, I know as well. Everyone, I, see what you're saying. I, I know, and I know everyone. Um, you you've stated sort of before because you ever on operation with people that are useless no one's really going to be useless are they because you've all gone through the thing yeah but anyone slip through the net and you sort of think because I th- I th- there's a few <laughs> players players that come to there's mind always, there's definitely always slip through the net there's always yeah. the old net slippage yeah and there's a couple and it's like how the hell are we in the same room yeah yeah and then um, we, we all know who we're talking about here yeah <laughs> great rugby player just sometimes idiot where, where who are we talking about Ed Holmes <laughs> Oh right. <laughs> yeah. No, I can. Uh, yeah. Oh, I love him, and he's a great rugby player. Yeah. But he does do some ditzy stuff. You yeah. know, and you're like sometimes how how have you have you got out of bed this morning? Yeah, and then but we wanted to see a few characteristics as well, and like you know, have you ever had anyone who's been an absolute nightmare? Um, no, there's people that sort of everyone fucks up. Yeah. I've fucked up. You know, we've all fucked up, and they're normally things that you can bounce back from they're funny things you know i i can remember early early on in my career join you join you finish selection and you finish it and there's there was 350 blokes start as and there was eight finished right so you're like that i'm the fucking you know you get given that beret you get what it's called you get badged and you think you're the fucking dog's bollocks you are like i am awesome then you go and join your squadron and you come down to earth with a fucking rapid, rapid thud because there's people that have been there for years and they know their shit and you ain't nothing. And you're like, <laughs> and you get thrown a load of kit that you don't know how to use and they're like on you, fucking do this, like we're doing it. And it was fucking, I was like, oh my God, this is, this is an overload of fucking all sorts of things. Anyway, we, we were doing a run through on one of the live ranges. So we're all in black gear with fucking balaclava. In fact, we've got respirators, like gas masks on and it's quite... You know, when you're running around with all that kit on, it's fucking hard work. Anyway, I had the shotgun, the shotgun that you use the shotgun for blowing hinges off doors. It's to get into buildings. So I've got the shotgun. It's pitch black, and there's and there's two squad. It's a two squadron run through. So there's two squadrons of blokes in this small like an area like this. We're crammed in like that, waiting to go, and everyone's getting hot, and they're like, "Fucking, let's go, let's get this fucking run through done." I'm down on one knee. And I'm fucking trying to bomb the, put the, load up the shotgun. So you load it up. Anyway, they're all like, fucking hurry up. I'm like, hold, hold. Because that's what you say before, you, you know, if you don't want anyone to go, you say hold. So I'm there and I'm trying to load this thing up. And next thing I'm like, and it's like jammed. And blokes are like, what's fucking going on? And I'm like, hold. And I'm like, fucking hell. Oh, I'm new, I'm new. I've only been there a few months. And they're like, what's going on anyway? The bloke that's running the range, this guy called Mix. I'm like, what the fuck's going on there? And I'm like, oh, fucking shotgun's jammed. So he's come over, he's got his fucking torch. He's like, give me that here. He's like, fucking looking. He's like, he's like, it fucking help if you put the rounds in the right way round. And I'm like, literally, everyone's like, whoa, banging, because it's a ship that we're on there, banging the metal fucking wall. Boom, 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 boom. Who is it? Name and shame, who is it? And I'm like, no, don't tell him. And he's like, who? He's like, who's that? And I'm like, oh, and he's like, who is it? And I'm like, it's Foxy. He goes, it's Foxy. Oh. And I'm like, fuck. And there was one of the lads who I'd passed selection with. So we joined at the same time. And I could hear him the most because he's thinking, thank fuck that was me. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck. I got fucking ripped for that phrase. But there's loads of that stuff going on, you know. Blokes fucking just falling off, you know, be doing mobility stuff, fall off a motorbike. There's been blokes literally, as you're about to, you're supposed to be quiet, about to go into a room or a door or a building, and they've leant on the wall and it's the doorbell. Ding, ding. <laughs> like all this sort of, you know, all sorts of stuff like that goes on. Stealthy. Yeah. <laughs> there's all, yeah, exactly. There's all, there's always, there's always shenanigans going on. There's always she, something funny. And that's exactly why I said Ed Holmes. Um, 100%. Because I did a co- I did a commercial thing with Ed the other day. Yeah? yeah, very simple instruction. Yeah, it was three of us. You had to go down the line. You had to say it, your names individually. Yeah, and then say this was a, like the plastic cup challenge or whatever. Yeah. So he's turned to to me and Jan and gone. So we're just going to say our own names. You don't like. We don't need to say plastic cup challenge after our name. We'll do it together. All right. And we've gone. Yeah, we heard the instructions. And then he went. 
<laughs> I'm Ed Holmes, and this is the Plastic Cup Challenge. Yeah? <laughs> First thing. And you know when you're sat there, and I've just started creasing up, and I was like, you're such a fool, yeah? So he's going, oh, Ed, you, you get it now? Yeah, 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 yeah. And he's turned around and going, I'm Ed Holmes, yeah? <laughs> Got his name wrong the second time. And I was like this. I was like, how have you, how do you function day to day? You've literally had to say a set, you've had to say your own name and you've messed it up twice. He's really struggled this preseason. There's been a lot of moments like that. Like we're, we're in a walkthrough in, um, in the line out. So, you know, they lift up. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're in a walkthrough and we're going, <laughs> right, so the attack, we're going to maul against you. So we go up, down, we're going to hit the bags. And Ed's on defence and he's holding the bags. And um, so they're like, right, so that's, they're talking it through. That's what we're going to do. And Ed's asking, so, so can we go up? Can we can we steal the ball? Can we lift? Go up? No, no, Ed, you're on bags. Like you're, you're holding, holding a bag. bag. Yeah, yeah, but can we go up? No, Ed, mate, you're holding a bag. And he's asked about three or four times, to the point where boys are just like that. Like, oh, just leave him, leave well, him. Like, I don't know what to do anymore. Hey, you know what I mean, I think he's just swamps himself with just amazing amounts of self-dialogue like <coughs> paralyzes himself oh no you overthink yeah, like, you think that's he's a a I reckon yeah. if you were in his brain it would be like wow yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's so much yeah. noise in here <laughs> <laughs> that's the only way because like the man's articulate he's intelligent oh, yeah. he's well read and then the minute it comes to like anything well, you like get that, the ball in his hands as well he's yeah, like yeah, yeah. oh yeah he's, yeah he's He's, yeah. uh, he's a very large human. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. That's what I was saying. He's yeah. too smart for his anger. That's yeah, what it is. Know, that's yeah. the problem. Yeah. 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 Too many avenues of mm. thought. Yeah, that's right. A few more brain cells removed and it'll be all right. All right, so we're picking a team. Yeah. Oh, for, for, for this operation. Yeah, I want an, I want an operation. I'm going to give you characteristics just and you're going to tell me the people. Yeah, just yeah, a couple. Yeah, that's, okay. so you yeah, that's like a good one. Three, okay. or four, three or four blokes to go with you. Right. Physically robust is one. Who's that? Check. That's right. <laughs> Wait, are we going with Willie? Oh, no. I don't know. What's, 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 no, what's, <laughs> what's the second one? Check me again. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Third guy. Third guy. Oh, check me. This is going. No, uh, no. Physically robust. It's not a one-man job. No, it's no, no. Well, can I clone myself and go just five blokes of me? We've Hang just... on, we haven't got to the end yet. There's yeah, more no, to come. There's no, more to come. Right, so physically robust. So physically and you robust. Mean, and yeah, so then we need mentally robust. Someone that can fucking withstand a lot of psychological trauma. You can't do that. <laughs> you, your, I spiral you, very quickly. your mental health is up and down over a season. <laughs> who's, That's who's, why solid, who's solid in the mental health department? DT. Yeah, but it's all doesn't it's exist. Almost too angry though. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, but he's he's not you're that right. he's not that easy to shake. Like he'll keep coming back. I think he's the for for the for the purposes. I'd say DT then. Okay, mm. so you got that. Then we're gonna go with. Um, Stubborn. Harry Thacker. <laughs> yeah, that I reckon I got that vibe actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got the vibe. Genuine? Yeah, but that's yeah. not bad. Not in a, a no, it's thing. a good We've thing. We've been though. here an hour. I genuinely, no, 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 I genuinely think. think. Even when we were talking about, <laughs> you, you absolutely know, stink I'm going to stick with you. You're like, yeah, no chance. No, <laughs> no, no one's keeping with me. I'm fucking. Uh, uh, so there's, there's that. There's um. HT sauce. Yeah, hundred percent. Uncomfortable with, or being comfortable with. Uncomfortable, as in not minding the shit, uh, as in just like doesn't necessarily need to be clever, but just like literally the one that you can rely on. But even when it's fucking miserable, pissing down sideways rain, yeah, either. smiles in the face of death. Who is it? <sighs> it comes it's definitely on me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not taking you for anything. If we, not, if we needed a calendar, <laughs> if we needed a calendar to show off, you know. Our squadron, you can be there for the photo. <laughs> yeah. That is it. I'm never up. taking you. you. You're a pen up. That's okay, it. Fine, fine, fine. Um, who is? Yeah, that's a good one. You know who I would have, would pick if he was still is uh, Jeffers. Yeah. yeah, Jeffers never had a bad day. The whole time I've been in this club, never had a day where he was down. It was weird. I was like. You're right. Are we talking performance here or I'm just morale? It's, it's absolute. It's it, you know when the chips are down. Yeah. It's we're in the minds of Moria. You, you, too. Like you know when it's like the old school grounds when it's the quagmire. Oh yeah. Shit. yeah, yeah, yeah Everyone yeah. is mm. miserable. Everyone who thrive off that. Do you know that? who went through? Yeah. What Klosk. Oh, that's a good show. George Kloska, Human Granite. Yes, the juggernaut. He, cause, but then again, he doesn't spot like he. You're probably not getting the full smiles off him. Yeah, no, no, he's, no he's, it's just, it's whether, just like whether whether we're level. having a good time or a bad time, he's sat he's just at that there. same just position. Yeah, yeah. 
and he's like, and if you ever yeah. need a battering ram, just pick him up, yeah. bang, through the door. If you ever put your bullets backwards in a shotgun, no, I'm, I'm you just could just use him coming instead. Back, I just want to revisit that. <laughs> For weeks after that, I tried to do that. It's impossible. You can't do it. So that bloke was talking shit. I don't know what happened. <laughs> you there, was just a, there was just a jam. There was a jamage in the yeah, gun. Anyway, we digress. So, That's yeah, a good okay. squad. Um, I'm happy with that as a representation of our team. What about someone that can think outside the box? Something, okay. that, someone a bit more uh, expansive with their viewpoint on the way to do things. That might be you, Max. That you could actually. I be good for that. Squad? Can I make the squad? Just, I know, well, okay. no, you've got to make do the squad. You're here. Do we have, he have, to, have to take Do we have to game? take <laughs> Could we ring him up? <laughs> Call yeah, a friend. Like, phone think, a friend. I think for the amount, like the amount operator in, think, in the Matrix. Yeah, yeah. Operator. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. yeah. I think... Like, no, as much as he's the one operating the drone that's radioing in. You'd be a liability elsewhere. How so? Why would I? Oh, you've heard it. Elaborate. No, I'm actually intrigued. I want to know why. The wind Do you know why as well? Yeah, yeah. Because do what? You would say one thing and make me spiral with you, firstly. <laughs> so you take me down. Any physical exertion that's over, like, I don't know, pressing something over your head, you'd be fatigued. I don't think I'm... I think I'm a lot your better Your calf now. would blow. I'm a little bit... Okay, yeah, fair, fair. That's fair. If it was too far, yeah, we're in trouble. I just think... And then if you do go down, I'm not carrying you. You're too heavy and big. No, I'll just crawl. Upper body strength. That's what I've got going for me. I just don't think I could take you. He's on the phone. Can you, you get that little hotline headpiece? Just, just for the thinking. He can come though, can't he? You yeah, need yeah. someone I'm who's back at base. Good looking. Well, yeah, I said well, I'm going. Already. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> you can intimidate. Uh, that's that's half the battle. Intimidate. True. Uh, that's not. I don't think that's me. Yeah, no. You're like a big kind of. I'm like middle of the pack, like scary. You're like one of those new founders, you know. Yeah. That's a nice charismatic dog. Yeah. I'm trying to think through the team in. Uh, do you remember the film Predator? Yeah. Mm. Oh, what a team. Jesse that Ventura. Was. You yeah, could I'll be, be him. Jesse. Yeah. All right. Go. So we need four. The goddamn special four, time round of five. Yeah. So who did we say? The cockroach, aka Jake Walmore. You. As robust. What were you for? Just robust physically. Robust. Like, right. physically robust. Survive okay. anything. Yeah, yeah. The guys. Yeah. yeah. The cockroach. The cockroach. Yeah. 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 Survive the Holocaust. Yeah. And we said Harry Thacker. Stubborn. 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 Mentally robust. Did you say? Did we say that? George Klosk. Klosk. Yeah. George Klosk. Oh, no, but wasn't he um, uh, the comfortable with the uncomfortable? Yeah. No matter what the no matter yeah, how shit it yeah. is, he still. Who was who was meant? So actually, it's funny because we picked ourselves. Yeah. Well, you had to. Me, DT Max, Max, DT, DT. mentally DT. robust. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That guy's a savage. And then, um, yeah, George Klosk. That's all I. I don't Mate, heavy. It's not a very mobile it's team. It's not mobile, and there's going to be a lot of food. We've got helicopters, boats, and all sorts of We'd have to carry a lot of food. Helicopters, boats, nah, parachutes, you, you know, mobile. <laughs> as long as you can run through walls, that's all that matters. Yeah. Can, uh, I, also, I remember, I remember you alluding to the, you've had your sort of qualifications in canine handling. Mm. So with the dogs, are you using them on point or for IED detection? Everything. So they were Everything. there for protection and detection. So they would detect stuff and they would um, protect us, so attack stuff. They were awesome. They're so scary, bro. They're on another level now as well. What though. breed are these dogs? Uh, predominantly Malinois. Belgian Malinois. There are a few German Shepherds, but I think they really, they try and side with the Belgian breed because it's just more... Athletic. It's more athletic, isn't it? Yeah, the yeah. breed's purer. It hasn't been, well, if you get a decent one, they haven't been watered down and they're just, they're smaller, so they're not as, you know, everyone thinks that these dogs are massive, big German Shepherds, they're but terrifying. they're not. You, you, these things are a little bit smaller. They're lighter in colour normally and they're just at their head cases. It's like having a delinquent. There yeah. we go. Oh, man, very well done. Good looking and he's dog. jumping out planes that is, with you. Uh, that's not, diff, not, not dissimilar to the one I had, yeah. They're terrifying. They're the ones they... So yeah, you, if you're, that? you go on tour and you're dog handler for... For a six month tour. Six yeah, month tour. So you, you, is that dog fully your responsibility? Yeah, then? it's a pain in the ass. Yeah. It's a great job. It's an awesome job. And it's a, it's a force multiplier. It's an amazing asset. But you've got, you know, you, I come off the ground and while all the other lads are sorting themselves out, I've got to sort that fucker out. Yeah. I've got to like, walk him off, brush, brush him down if he's fucking... Yeah, wash him. He might, he might need rehydrating because he's been on the ground for a bit, which means you've got to IV him in the back of the net. And, like, you, in yes, the rougher yeah. net, you can bang a, bang a bag of water into him. It's just... It is, and then obviously you turn up in the morning, he's shit everywhere. 
So I've got to pick that up, give him a walk, train him up. Anything he's sort of sloppy on, you know, bring him back in. Yeah. Back up to speed with stuff. And is this a dog but that you've had the whole time? I, like so I, I did the initial course. You do a 15-week course where you, the dog's learning stuff and you're learning with him. With the dog. How to do it, how to do certain things. And then, then I went away with him and he came away for six months and... Yeah, lads love him. Some lad, there's some people that are non-doggy people, which yeah. are a bit like, but he senses that, and so he then fucking... <laughs> then, then it makes it even worse. Yeah, he's yeah. Like, they walk past, he's like... <laughs> they're like, fuck <laughs> it I'm like, I told you, stay away from the dog. <laughs> they are spooky, yeah. though. How many tours will the dog do? They can do a lot. I think my dog, he was brilliant. He turned out to be unbelievable. So he would get re-teamed with other handlers as we swapped yeah. over, they'd re-team him. So do a lot. They were crazy, crazy buggers. The old they, they, they like send them up through the top top window in a compound, and let them go nutty, and then they bust in through the doors. You think you can get your two to do that? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> what? <laughs> Shane and like, little rats. Imagine the, imagine the pipes that they could get in yeah. through, bro. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Two hours. <laughs> just get attacked by two hours at an event or something. Yeah. Like yeah, but the thing is, no one's expecting it. Yeah. yeah. Like a Monty Python skit, you know, yeah. the beast, the, that yeah. rabbit. That <laughs> just <laughs> just <laughs> that's on the Holy Grail. Be later, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Holy Grail. Mate, it'd be unbelievable. But really, it's just like getting attacked by a stapler without any staples. <laughs> Can't do anything. That's all right. If it lands on your face or something, it'd be enough Mate, to. I'm you telling you, these Belgian Malinois. I saw, I saw one right run through a driving car at like 30. He's taken the pa- He's taken. The, he's gone through the passenger window. Perfect jump, sideways on. Taken the guy's arm off the steering wheel. The geezer's tumbled out the car. He's in a big suit, and he's just on him, just beat him. Not making a single sound, no growling, nothing. Yeah. They don't even make a noise, man, and they're just savaging this They're guy. just cold. Yeah. Have you ever been <laughs> in the suit? So you have to yeah, you have to do it when you're on the course. Yeah, you're in the suit, mate. It is fucking scary. <laughs> I can imagine that's oh absolutely terrifying. You'll do certain <laughs> scenarios. You used to do like the fighting in woods and forests. Like that's a sort of, there's ta- tactics behind it, but you do it obviously with a dog. You'd be running through the forest in this suit. <laughs> <laughs> and this and and off and you can't. You like looking behind. You can't see. You can't it, see it, it. <laughs> and like you'll look round, and the thing will launch itself from like <laughs> from like ten, fifteen foot behind. It's like, and it just latches you. And blokes, it spins blokes. Yeah, out. No matter how wild. big you are, it will take you down. I couldn't believe how powerful they were. Like how easily they take people out. It's like getting hit by a missile. Bro. No, like, they can do it with the muzzle. They can take you out. They have mm-hmm. a muzzle on. They can. They know how to take you down. They just know how to do it. It's f- f- so wild. Imagine yeah. rocking up to work. It, it, they get, <laughs> yeah. They're like that again. Uh, you're in the suit, suit on man. <laughs> again, correlation, correlation between rugby. No, <laughs> you're in the tackle not, suit. It's, yeah, it's not. <laughs> it's not young boy. Yeah. You used to have the red man suits. You'd like get someone in the red man suit. And you'd go around fucking beating them and all this sort of thing. He's like the tackle yeah, suit. Yeah, yeah. But then sometimes it would be like we'd have we'd have to do like um, demos, or demonstrations for visitors. And and I was like that to a mate of mine, Rob. He's a fuck. Mate, he's a unit. He's like, you know, he's Big 64, brother. played rugby, all this sort of stuff. I'm like, mate, you're getting in the suit. And he's like, oh, fuck off, mate. And I'm like, and he, but he sort of dabbled in it. He was like, I wouldn't mind getting in the suit. Just, just see yeah, what just like. see what it's like. Anyway, I was like, right, you, we're going to do, it was like a, there was like a 150 metre stretch of ground. I got the dog. And I'm like, mate, you go. And I says, after you've gone for about 40 odd metres, 50 metres, I'm going to let the dog go. I says, when you hear it close, just stand still, because it, if it hits you, if he hits you when you're still moving, you'll you be get injured. You'll, yeah. yeah. <sighs> anyway, he didn't do it. The dog fucking whacked him whilst he was running. It spun. He twisted his ankle, and he was fuming with me. And I was like, hey. "I told you, <laughs> I told you, <laughs> I told you." <laughs> yeah. But he, even then, he sort of turned around. Like once the sort of dust settled, quite literally, he was like, right, "Mate, I, ne- I didn't realise how." It, how scary that thing is! Oh, like, right. you know, yeah, mental. They ain't wearing no suits out out with them. The yeah, yeah, muzzle, yeah. No muzzle oh, either. No, yeah, just on you. Yeah, I'm not where you want to go. Yeah, yeah Belgian man in the the to the jugular. Too dark. Sorry. <laughs> Too <Yeah>. dark. <laughs> There's one, there's one, th- there's one thing I did want to open up. I know we're probably getting pushed for time a bit, but there's one thing because I obviously. Just listening to a few things you've said in the past, and I don't know if the other boys have had it, and it cracked me up the first time I heard it. it. Was when you're out in what is it? When you're in observation, is it an OP? Is it OP? It is an OP, yeah. Is that where are you going with this though? What story? 
So an observation, an OP is yeah, an observation. Yeah. When you're place, like, but yeah, it's not like well, you're like living in like a. Yeah, you'll dig a hole and live in it. Yeah, and you'll. How, I wanted to ask you because I, I heard you briefly talk about it, and obviously uh, that there's probably one way I'm leading down. And it involves, I know where you're yeah, going. Yeah, you know where I'm going with to the it. Toilet. Yeah, yeah. Because and I think when the first thing when you said about that, I thought a lot of rugby players would struggle with it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just because our diets and stuff aren't, you know, a lot of red meat and caffeine. Yeah. Um, but all right, so you're in, you're in this. So how big would this thing be that you're living in? It varies, but it's not going to be that big because you don't want too much signature. You don't yeah. want to be able to see. So will you so spend a lot of your time in there, like a week led down? You be in a in a, an OP for anything. You can, I mean, a, an established OP. You could be in there for, you know, a couple of weeks. Yeah. What? Just watching, just rolling over, moving to one side. You try and have an admin area. You'll have a, <laughs> you'll have an area where you can, which is like the what they call the observer and the logger. So there'll be someone watching shit. You might have a camera system up there. And someone, if occurrences happen, it'll be like, yeah, that's fucking two men out of the front door of building one into such and such a car, and a bloke will be rogging that down. And then that will get sent back to headquarters. So you're bail- building up uh, an intelligence picture yeah. somewhere. But what's the advantage of that over a, a drone? Yeah, but this is before the days like of drones. That. And sometimes you want, if you can, you want to get people into position into an area that oh. if something goes, they're in a, they're in a position to then like become a quick reaction yeah, force yeah. or something yeah. so you can do that for a long time but then so that's that area and then you'll have an admin area normally if you've got the space and the ground to do it you want the admin area further back so you can there is the opportunity to be a little bit more relaxed because if you're on I've done it before where you're on top of them and it's fucking there's no real you can't sort of like chill out and make a little bit more noise or not worry about noise you're, you're in it but ultimately, you can't really move fast. You're pissing into bottles. That uh, if you're pissing into bottles normally at night when a night falls, you can get someone to go out with the piss bottles and ditch all the piss. So you got fucking. But when it comes to shitting, you normally you just you have a big roll of cling film, shit into cling film, wrap it up, put it in the top of your bergen, and you carry it out. You can't bury the pit the the shit because, because it shows a signature. Yeah, because obviously in the end, animals and shit start coming in, and if you're there for a long period of time. <laughs> people will know that so you yeah. got to carry it out <clears throat> and just the thought of that honestly i was like packing it up and putting it in your bag yeah, but uh, you know we what? go to the toilet okay. we've got like four cubicles next to each other so you, and we've all got very similar cycles because we eat at the same time yeah. drink coffee at the same time so you hear a lot of people use the toilet yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. and if that was asked of many of the lads yeah there's not many solid bowel movements going on um, no. yeah like yeah he couldn't do that, bro. He wouldn't, there wouldn't be a so Bergen So you just gambling? Enough. Is the food you're taking with so you to, <laughs> like, you, to you, make sure it comes out in an appropriate manner? You eat military rations that yeah. are designed for the field, and they are designed to block you up a little bit. Yeah. So it comes out, it, yeah. Oh, but, I mean, I have had a, I've had a... We did an, an OP. It was only in training. It was up on Dartmoor, and it was it was a really it was a shitty op. We couldn't have any overhead cover because it would have compromised us. It was pissing down for a week, with piss wet through, miserable as fuck. Anyway, it was toward, it was on the last day, so we were extracting. We were coming out of that op, and I can remember it was we had about two hours before darkness fell, which means we could move. And I'm like, fucking hell, my guts feel a bit funny here. So I've got the fucking cling film out, <laughs> and I've just <laughs> made, I've sprayed, <laughs> and it's gone all over the fucking admin area. Oh, like, literally oh. floats like that. What the Look fuck? Look the boulders. <laughs> yeah, 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 Standing in your sleeping <laughs> mat. I'm like, literally, the, the cling film was next to useless. It was, and I was yeah. like, lads, lads, fuck it. <laughs> and they were like, ah, thank fuck we're getting out of it. But no, everyone was like, ah, fucking, everyone, like, the thought of getting compromised, no one cared about. Yeah, yeah. It was about getting shit on. <laughs> like, cool. Yeah, because I, I, I heard you talk about it, and the way you just sort of, <laughs> the term poo pooed it a bit. You just went, yeah, yeah, just cling film, wrap it up. I was yeah, like, yeah. surely there's, that doesn't sound as. Yeah, that uh, sounds like a. I'm, there's some scenarios. That, yeah, yeah. There's always some incidents that involve shit. Yeah, that's just yeah. that's actually class. That's actually a class story. <laughs> I just want to ask you one. You know about the, the the third bit of selection, with the interrogation. Yeah. That's so. What, how does that work? Do they do? They, do you have? Do they like capture you? Yeah, so you go so that you go through a process. So you do a load of lectures beforehand, where you you get taught conduct Counter. under capture. You get taught survival skills. You do a whole weekend isolation where you're in 
one area in your team living off the land building a shower like the, the, the MLs showed you and all that sort of stuff then what happens from there you get caught roughed up you go through six hours of what they call conditioning or sort of tactical you don't get interrogated you just get put into stress positions and what have you then it's almost like you've busted out and they drive you somewhere you're now dressed in or on our it, just, it does vary between courses but for us we were dressed in like old school second world war clothing just because it's shit Let, dumped off somewhere and then we were on the run for a week so we're basically getting chased by the hunter force which is normally about 100 odd soldiers with you know different assets helicopters dogs and all that sort of thing and they're looking for you and you've got to try and evade capture but ultimately it does finish with you it oh it has to finish with you getting captured Capture, you know it's yeah. coming you get jumped a bit roughed up and then you go into like the bags you go into interrogation for i think it's about 36 hours so no one's completed it as in evaded the cat or no no that you've got to because the 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 criteria part of, the part of that phase is to do the interrogation okay. phase, so you're always going to get that, Is that like the crying babies and yeah, all that? No, it's like stress smart. positions. Stress that positions. Get me. Do, it. That's, do you know what? For all the guys that we've had on the show, rugby players struggle with stress yeah. positions because obviously everyone's got... You know, got their you know when you're in like an MRI machine yeah. Yeah. and they're like thumb? The amount of times I had my thumb, but you have to lie there yeah, with your arm just with your arm up like that. Yeah. And it's just dead. What are the what are the main stress positions? Uh, I think they might have varied a little bit, but normally they they don't sound that bad. One is sat down on the floor, cross legged. You failed already. Like that, but you've Ooh. got to have your arms back like that. And so you'll, you'll always be like this, and then they come behind you and wrench you. Oh, mm. oh, really? uh, another one is against the wall like that. So you, your legs are spread wide, and you're leaning against the wall like that. And it seems like the minute you get into it, you're like, I oh, thank fuck for that two minutes you're like fucking hell this is killing me and you just really rotate through that I can't think there used to be one where you'd be on the f this one's ridiculous and you're almost planking on your on your elbows but I don't ever remember that lasting too long and they normally move you out of it but that's they're the two main ones what's the crying baby that's like what you listen to. So they have like loud noises pumping out. Sometimes it's white noise. Sometimes it's women screaming, crying babies. Well, Jap constantly. Jap yeah, Japanese thrash metal. So if you're in a stress position, you're listening to that blindfolded. If you're not there, you're in an interrogation. And you just bounce through the, between the two. And what does interrogation consist of? Oh, mate, it consists of lots of different... They try to get you to talk and say things. They do like the first one... It's called processing, where they're, they're basically stripping you, removing you of any form of identity, and they're just digging in. They're not being, not being aggressive normally. But, I mean, I had, you know, stripped naked. I'd fucking... I had bad stomach on the run, so I'd fucking shit my pants. I was all, like, filthy. And there was a man and a woman, and the woman was just fucking, like, ridiculing me. <laughs> About 20 minutes of ridiculing me, asking if I was happy with what was... Uh, <laughs> what I was packing. <laughs> was, I was never had any complaints. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's wild, isn't it? I know. You would crumble. <laughs> I hate myself. You can't hate me more than I hate myself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, yeah. That's, that's what you that need to get. That's what you need to in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You can't uh, say to me. Over your head, I'm done. See you. <laughs> you can't say to me what I haven't already said to myself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, winning. Oh, that's. Well, unfortunately, I think we're gonna have to finish there because um, to the powers that be are pushing us. I could just stay here for. Oh, I could stay for ages, forever. Yeah. But um. But you'd melt. I yeah. probably melt. Actually, I think I've melt. Wait, you've, I've climatized now. Come good now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just the first five minutes. Now you're just a nice glisten. Maybe get me in the jungle. Um, get too far. Yeah, that's what happens. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I'd just like to say thanks again. Well, say thanks to Harry Thacker first. Because yeah, I know, Harry, obviously, this is having you on. slightly out of your comfort zone, but I've really enjoyed your you company too. Yeah, same. But yeah. Yeah. Loved it. I think you really grew into Fun. the role over there. <laughs> I'm, glad right. you, I'm glad you censored me as well. Yeah. And uh, such a potty man. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, <laughs> like that. and Jason, thank you very much for... Thanks everything today on. yeah it's, it's been, been an absolute pleasure, pleasure. Yeah. you know um you know could talk all day but you know rogan's got to get home 
Um, There's a balloon festival to get to. Yeah, 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 hundred percent. <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah. So thank you very much, um, and we'll call it there. Over and out.